Like all operations, there are some risks that every patient needs to be aware of and understand. Serious complications are rare, but some minor complications are more common, and I'll point each of these out to you as we go along. All patients will have some degree of mild, ongoing bleeding and oozing inside their hip for several days after surgery. This is one of the reasons your thigh will be swollen. It is unusual for a patient to require a blood transfusion, but sometimes that is necessary. Injury to a major blood vessel is a very rare complication, but if it did happen, you may require additional surgery to repair that blood vessel. Damage to a major nerve is also very rare, but if that occurred, you could be left with some permanent weakness. Infection is thankfully a rare complication, occurring in less than 1% of patients. Infection with the anterior approach is actually lower than with any other hip replacement approach. If you do have a deep infection inside your joint, it can be challenging to treat. It will require further surgery to wash out the infection, several weeks of antibiotics, and sometimes a number of operations to remove the infected prosthesis and replace it with a new one. You'll be given antibiotics via a drip before and after your surgery to reduce the risk of an infection. You will also be given a scrub brush of antiseptic solution to wash your entire body with prior to surgery. I recommend the use of an antibacterial nasal ointment in the five days before joint replacement surgery. Your nose is a major reservoir of bacteria that can cause joint infections. By using the ointment, we reduce the number of these bacteria and some studies indicate this may reduce the risk of an infection ever occurring in your hip replacement. It is very common for patients to describe a feeling of numbness on the outside of their thigh. This is because there is a network of fine sensory nerves just beneath the skin, very close to the location of your surgery. Now these nerves can be damaged by being cut or stretched, or even just irritated from swelling. This numbness usually resolves, but it may take three to six months or more for this to occur. In some patients, numbness may be permanent. This would not affect your movement, but it may irritate your skin, and some patients find the feeling uncomfortable. You will be given medication after your surgery to gently thin your blood, to reduce the risk of you forming a blood clot in your calf, otherwise known as a DVT. Now, a blood clot in your calf in itself is not dangerous, and your body will slowly dissolve the clot. However, if the blood clot traveled from your calf up into your lungs, it could make you very unwell or even be fatal. This situation is fortunately very uncommon. We monitor you closely for signs or symptoms of this during your recovery after surgery. An artificial hip joint is not as stable as your natural hip joint, and it is possible for a hip replacement to dislocate. Now this simply means that the ball pops out of the socket. One of the many reasons that I prefer the anterior approach for my patients is the risk of dislocation is lower than with other approaches. The risk of dislocation is about 1%. If your hip did dislocate, you would need to have it manipulated back into place under anesthesia. If it continued to dislocate, you may require revision surgery to prevent this happening again. A major fracture of the thigh bone or the bony socket of your hip joint is a rare complication, occurring in about 1% of patients. The risk of this occurring is slightly higher with the anterior approach than other approaches. This can occur during the operation or in the weeks and months after surgery. If this occurred, you may require further surgery to fix the fracture and replace the hip joint, or a slow recovery period to allow the fracture to heal. A hip replacement can make your leg longer or shorter. In general, we aim to equalise your leg lengths so they're about the same on both sides. But the most important factor is that your hip joint is stable and does not dislocate. The muscles around your hip joint are a bit like elastic bands, and when they are placed under some tension, they keep the hip snugly in place. Sometimes, a surgeon may need to make the leg slightly longer to increase the tension of these muscles and stabilise the joint. If there is a one centimetre or less difference in your leg lengths, then most patients are very unlikely to even notice a difference. If it is greater than this, you may notice it, but wearing an orthotic within your shoe on the other side is usually enough to make a patient's leg lengths feel equal. If you would like to talk to me about your hip, then please ring my rooms at any time to make an appointment. 
If you haven't already had appropriate scans, I can arrange for these to occur before I see you.